been brought to you by the letter W. All right, so for today's ABCs of Archaeology, we are up to W, getting mighty close to the end now. And W is for Wheeler Box Grid. Now, the Wheeler Box Grid is a method of excavation that allows you to uncover a wide area for investigation, but also for the adequate recording of the stratigraphy. And it looks something like this. Now, if you want to know more about stratigraphy, that all-important subject in archaeology, you can see our ABCs of Archaeology S for Stratigraphy, and you'll hear a lot more in depth there. Okay, so before we get into the technical stuff, who is Wheeler and why is this his box grid? Well, Sir Mortimer Wheeler was a key figure in British archaeology who was really a pioneer in developing modern archaeological methods and practices. And despite him looking like such a distinguished and perhaps stuffy old gentleman, he was actually a rather dashing, courageous, controversial, and eccentric figure. Well, why do I describe him this way? First, he fought in both world wars, World War I and II, the latter of which he volunteered for and even saw combat in, despite being well into his 50s. He was a womanizer, much to the chagrin of his younger wife, Tessa, herself an accomplished archaeologist who many say was actually partially or even mostly responsible for a lot of Mortimer's achievements. And she unfortunately died prematurely in 1936 at the age of 43. He founded the Institute of Archaeology in London, where I just got my master's degree. And despite what it looks like, it's actually one of the best places to study archaeology. And not only did Mortimer Wheeler excavate a lot of famous sites in Britain, he also spent a lot of time in South Asia as the Director General of the Archaeological Survey of India. Now, he was the last head of that organization under British colonialism, and though he did a lot to preserve and protect the cultural heritage of the subcontinent, he also demonstrated racist and brutal attitudes towards the locals he worked with, to the extent that it was somewhat out of place, even for its time. Anyway, you get the idea. Uh, so clearly he's a colorful guy. So during the course of these excavations, he developed this new method, which was later called the Wheeler Box Grid, which solved a few archaeological problems, which we will get into later. Now, the specific excavations associated with him developing this method were Virilanium, uh, a Roman settlement in the modern-day city of St. Albans, and also Maiden Castle, an Iron Age hill fort in Dorset, England. And actually, his wife was very present and active in these excavations. And basically, because he was bored after a while, he turned over the excavation at Viralamium to one of his understudies, Kathleen Kenyon, who later became a very accomplished archaeologist herself. So there's some thought that both of these women had a lot of influence on this uh, methodology. And hence, some people refer to it as the Wheeler-Kenyon method. Anyway, both of these were large, complex sites with lots of phases, prehistoric, Roman, etc., and both were scenes of some serious warfare. Now, at Verulamium, that involved ancient badass and slay queen, Boudicca, who burned the place down in her rebellion against the Romans. You mean Boudicca? I mean Boudicca. You say Boudicca, do you? Yes. Why do you say Boudicca? Because it's correct. Because they are showing a proper, the proper respect of one who did not know her. So these sites are spread out and they have a lot of layers. Now, without the modern photographic and measurement equipment, if you were to do an open excavation, you'd certainly uncover the whole place, but you'd lose all of those layers, which would be very difficult to record if you were just digging the whole place up. And remember, it's those layers that allow us to establish a chronology and a better understanding of what happened and when it happened. And Wheeler was operating through most of his career without the benefit of radiocarbon dating. For example, the burn layer at Viralamium represents the Boudican Rebellion, and we know the absolute date of that. It was 60 to 61 AD. So this aids us in relatively dating the material above and below that burn layer. Now, if we were to take the opposite approach and just focus on the vertical, so dig a few test pits far down, we would get the stratigraphy, but without a wider sense of what was going on at the site, 
so we wouldn't actually learn much. Hence, this method, the Wheeler box method, allows us to dig out and down with a good understanding of what happened. So, what does this actually look like? Well, a defined square area is mapped out, and because it's square, it's easy to keep track of, even before our modern measurement methods and computerization. Now, within that square area, square um, areas of Earth are removed at regular intervals and regular sizes, usually like one meter, and that's done in a very orderly, straight fashion. And here's how this looked at Maiden Castle when Wheeler was excavating there. As you'll see, in between the squares, there are these layers of earth that are left, like walls, and those are called balks, B-A-L-K, and they serve a few different purposes. First, they allow you to see the stratigraphy as you're digging, and of course any objects you find you can place within that chronology of the stratigraphy. And you can trace these layers throughout the whole site because you're digging all over in different squares. And of course, if you find one area particularly interesting, you can dig an adjacent square to see what's happening over there, or you can remove the bulk entirely to have a sort of more open excavation. However, they also serve a very practical purpose, which is to create a pathway for people to walk to and from the site, especially to take away the excess dirt that they've removed, which is called spoils in archaeology. And those bulks allow them to do this without trampling all over the site. They also allow site supervisors an easy vantage point and access all over the site where they can walk around, talk to the field archaeologists, and crack the whip if they need to. Get your ass up and work. So this is the perfect method of excavation, right? Well, it was a big innovation in its time, but not exactly anymore. If you look at all these images I'm showing, you'll notice that those with box grids tend to be very old. And that's because all of our modern tools for geolocation, photography, measurement, etc., they kind of make some of the benefits of the box grid obsolete. In general, it's much easier now to record things, to take photographs, to take measurements, so you won't see this method used very more. It's only rarely in some sites I hear in South Asia, for example. And also, even at the time it was being used, some people complained that just sort of following this pre-measured, preordained grid didn't allow you to be flexible in economizing your resources as you were doing the excavation. In other words, as you discover features to sort of uh, for, let the dig reflect that to investigate the points of actual interest. Also, bulks obviously do obscure some of the features and prevent you from maybe seeing the relationships between them, especially smaller features. So sometimes it's better to just knock them out of the way. Move that miserable piece of and hence the Wheeler box grid, while an innovation in its own time, has kind of gone out of style. So that's W for Wheeler box grid. Hey. If you like what you heard, give me that thumbs up below, hit that bell to subscribe, or if you want to support more independent archaeology content, consider contributing to my Patreon, where you can enjoy some exclusive members-only benefits and other goodies. Until the next dig.